Hello, everyone. I'm Elizabeth DePompe with the communications team at DAV National Headquarters in Erlinger, Kentucky, and I'll be your moderator today. In just a few moments, National Membership Director Doug Wells will give a presentation about officer election reports and mydav.org. If you have questions, please type them in the Q&A box, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we can during the Q&A portion at the end. Doug and his team are always available, but we encourage everyone to take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions. After today, you'll be able to review a recording of this presentation on DAV.org under Member Resources and on DAV's YouTube page. You'll find more videos about MyDAV.org there as well. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Doug. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking uh, some time out of your busy schedules to join us here for this uh, important webinar. Um, we're uh, certainly appreciative of that effort and uh, uh, just want to reinforce uh, that we are always here for you. If there's anything that we here at the membership team or national headquarters can do for you, uh, you know where to find us on your screen here. Um, you'll see uh, my contact information. Uh, I always joke about this. I probably got the easiest uh, email address in DAV history, dwells at DAV.org, and that is the direct line to my desk. So, again, don't ever hesitate to, to reach out if there's anything uh, my team or I can, can do to help you out. Uh, and if we're, uh, if we're not able to uh, answer your question, uh, we're going to certainly get you uh, a warm hand off to the right folks here at headquarters to assist you. Um, so I'd be remiss if I... Uh, talked about officer election reports without first going back and, and reviewing just a little bit about mydav.org uh, in which the officer election uh, report functionality rests. Uh, so what is mydav.org? So it's a self-service and reports repository uh, for our members and member leaders. Uh, all DAV and auxiliary members have access to mydav.org. Um, DAV and auxiliary department and chapter or unit officers have expanded roles-based uh, access. So I'll, I'll reinforce that a couple of times, but essentially what it means is, uh, depending on what hats you're wearing within the organization, uh, will determine what uh, tiles are available to you in mydev.org. So the easiest place to find uh, everything you need related to mydev.org is in our member resources section. So if you go to the main webpage at dav.org, um, <clears throat> In the top right-hand corner above the red Donate button, you'll see the Member Resources uh, uh, link. Just click on that. Uh, when you get to that, uh, that page, just scroll down past the tiles that you'll see there, and you'll see that Register or Sign In to MyDAV.org. Uh, you can, of course, register, sign in, or you can uh, take a look at the uh, user manual. Um, so certainly uh, that is... Uh, along with all of the uh, capabilities uh, that we're pushing through mydav.org, that manual will be continually updated. Uh, you know, so feel free to peruse that and, and um, uh, you know, let us know if you have any questions or concerns. The first thing uh, that you're going to need to do in order to get access to uh, mydav.org is register. So uh, if you haven't already done this, please take an opportunity to do this. Again, all members whether or not you're an elected or appointed officer, have access to mydav.org. Uh, it, again, it just uh, uh, just remember that the, the tiles that will be available to you are based on whatever your roles are within the organization. Uh, it's a very simple registration form. Uh, you can either go to that link or, again, just do it uh, in, in the, the way I showed you in the previous screen. Um, but just click, uh, just complete this basic registration form. Uh, you'll submit that. The key points to remember here is make sure you're entering your contact information correct. And for those of you out there that might have more than one membership in DAV, 
if you've moved around the country a little bit, just make sure that you're utilizing uh, the membership number that you're going to be acting um, uh, as a uh, elected or appointed officer for through the system. Uh, you know, we can help change that if that changes for you. Again, if you make a move after that fact, uh, we can make sure that this is all spread away for you. But again, all DAV members should register for my DAV.org access. And what that does is if uh, you are subsequently uh, elected or appointed to an official position um, within the organization that would have expanded access, um, you won't have to worry about doing this, um, <clears throat> you know, while you're waiting to get your access. So you're kind of getting ahead of the power curve here a little bit. Um, when you do register, um, you'll get an initial email that says, hey, thanks for registering, but you need to give us a couple of days to validate you into the system. My team here at headquarters reviews all these registrations and ensures that everything is appropriate. If we have any issues, we'll, of course, reach out to you. But um, once we do get you uh, registered into the system, you'll get a second email saying, okay, you're ready to rock and roll now in my DAV.org. So again, this is all self-service. When you do your initial registration, uh, you're going to log in with the username and password that you created. Um, it's a good idea to go ahead and save the, the uh, login screen somewhere to your favorites or to bookmark it on your computer. Uh, so you just always have uh, an easy way to find it. That'll never change. Um, but you're going to use the username and password that you created uh, to gain access to mydev.org. You can certainly uh, gain access to it uh, with a mobile device uh, or on, a, on a, another computer. Just remember, if you're using a shared computer, say at a, a chapter home or at a department headquarters, uh, don't save your login information if, if other folks are using that computer as well, if it's not a, a private computer. Um, and again, this is entirely self-service. So uh, for those of you that might have been familiar with the um, with the old uh, legacy membership system, you no longer need to call us here at national headquarters. If you just click uh, the forgotten password um, link down here, it'll shoot you an email with instructions on how to reset your password. Um, you will have to do that at least once every 90 days uh, because our, our security protocols require that passwords uh, be expired and be reset every 90 days. So, um, you know, there's a couple of things we're doing uh, with this information. We want to make sure that we're keeping it all secure. Um, but, you know, just remember that if you if you go away for a little bit and come back and your password's not working, just reset your password and you'll be uh, good to go again. <clears throat> so when you log in ultimately to mydav.org, uh, the first thing you're going to see in, in there is the membership CRM home screen. Um, the uh, uh, the main page will afford you the ability to access all of the functions that you have access to. So again, if you're uh, if you're a uh, you know member that hasn't that doesn't have any um, uh, relatable uh, access. And what I want you to do is think of the, the officer election report, the, the physical report, um, the PDF fillable form. If you think about the left side of that report, so your, your commander, your senior vice, junior vice, your adjutant, treasurer, and then on the other side, the officer authorized to receive mail, those are the folks that have the expanded access. So if you're fulfilling one of those um, uh, positions at either the chapter or the department level, you'll have access to those reports. If you're at the department level, you'll have access to the, all of the reports for all of the chapters within your jurisdiction. If you're at the chapter level, your reports will be chapter focused. So uh, primarily this relates to um, the report repository and the officer election report. I uh, just want to take a quick moment and address the report repository. So we're continually uh, you know, working on these reports, refining them so that they're more user friendly, uh, with the exception of the labels report, which we're looking to push out here very quickly. You have access to all of the uh, legacy reports that you had in the membership system. Uh, and plus, you also have a historical population summary. So there are certain milestones, uh, our year end on June 30, our year beginning on July 1, every Monday, a couple of others here or there. 
that we capture the reports. So if you're looking at your membership goals and you want to find out, well, where did we start um, in uh, for our goal at the beginning of the year on July 1st, at the beginning of the membership year, um, you can look at your historical population summary from uh, July 1st and compare it to your current population summary so you can see the difference, uh, how well we're doing for with our recruiting goals, how far we still have to go, uh, to goal, all that sort of stuff. So again, this is only accessible by department and chapter officers. Uh, and it's great because you can either download it in an Excel, uh, kind of a pretty spreadsheet with uh, all those uh, nice headers and columns. It, it makes it very presentable. Or you can download it in a CSV format so that uh, uh, you can sort the columns any way you want. So that's a great tool for if you have to do a, a chapter newsletter or uh, you want to reach out to the folks in your chapter that have emails, all that kind of stuff, um, you can find that uh, you'll find that the CSV reports uh, are very uh, useful in that regard. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, our new capability to file officer election reports online through mydeb.org. So again, when you come into the membership CRM, if you're one of those uh, elected or appointed officers that have access to these reports, um, you'll find the officer election report tile there and you'll click on it. And what you'll see is something that looks like this. Um, we have uh, gone in and populated as far back as we had the data in the legacy membership system, all of the uh, historical officer reports going back to 2001, 2002-ish, uh, depending on the data that we had in the system for the individual uh, chapters uh, and departments. So uh, it's nice to be able to, to go back and reference those reports if you need to. Uh, so all you can do with those reports is view them. Um, you also have the ability to revise your current report. So there's no longer a need to submit an entirely new report uh, if you have an officer uh, resign or move out of state or pass away or whatever the fact may be uh, that causes that change to be made, or if you need to change your meeting time and location, all of this stuff can be done revising your current officer report. Um, and then also, once election time rolls around, you can go ahead and start your new report for your newly elected office. Um, so all of that stuff is done from the from the main screen here. Um, if you need to go back to the to the uh, Initial membership CRM screen, you can just click on this blue link here and it will take you back. So when you go into the officer election form, either to complete a new one or to revise it, this is essentially what you're going to be presented with. So you need to confirm, um, you know, what what uh, uh, what information is there already. If obviously something needs to be changed, we certainly want you to do that. Uh, but you need to populate not only the date of your election, but the date of the installation, uh, please remember that the installation date needs to be subsequent to the um, to the election date. If you're uh, if you're a, a, a chapter that has your elections and your installation on the same night, that's okay. But you, your installation cannot be before your election, obviously. But uh, just make sure that those dates are right. Sometimes people accidentally flip them, and and the report will get rejected, and they don't understand why. Um, but uh, so make sure all the, the meeting details and all that stuff is, is correct. Um, and then when you uh, go to select your officers, so you'll notice that the, the current officers from the previous, um, the previous annual, or pardon me, the previous officer election report are brought forward and automatically populated. If you've had a complete change in that, uh, in that office, um, you know, go ahead and select that X and it'll clear out that officer spot. If the spot is being uh, uh, maintained by the same individual that was on the previous report, there's nothing you got to do. You can leave it alone. Uh, so this is a great, uh, you know, time saver here and uh, it really uh, is being well received. So if you, if you do, and I'm really excited about this, if you do have a change in your officer, um, all you need to do is look them up. You don't need their membership number to look them up. You can now look them up by name. So if you, it'll give you up to 100 results. I mean, obviously there are some bigger chapters out there, but most don't get 
uh, to that level. But, uh, you know, maybe it becomes a problem if somebody's got a last name of Smith and you got a ton of Smiths in the in the chapter of the department. But um, <clears throat> basically, you type in their their last name. So you can type in their lookup ID or member ID. You can type in their membership number uh, here, or you can type in their last first name, their middle name, suffix if you need to. There's some other identifying criteria, but most folks can just type in the last name here in the third line and uh, you know hit search, and those folks will uh, start to appear for you. So uh, once you get um, once you identify the person that's uh, that you're looking for, and only those folks that meet that search criteria that exist in your current uh, on your current membership roles will be shown. So if you're not finding a person that you're looking for on the membership roles, we need to verify that they're actually a member of your chapter. Again, going back to that scenario where somebody may move or whatever, remember a, a uh, transfer form needs to be uh, executed before uh, they'll be eligible to be put on your officer election report. Um, we can, again, help with that, and you can go back and revise the report before you submit it, um, you know, if there's an issue with that. So, again, just always reach out to us, and we'll get you squared away. But, um, again, once you identify the person that you're looking for, um, you just go ahead and click select on that data field, and it will populate them into that section on the officer election report. Um, once you get through, you know, completing all of your, uh, uh, all of your officers on the form, um, you can review them. And remember, there are certain officers that are required for the report. Um, you don't necessarily have to have an inspector general, uh, you know, or a BPTL in order to submit your, your report. So again, you got to think of the, the left side of the officer election report plus the officer authorized to receive mail, which is typically the same as the adjutant or the commander or something like that. Uh, but there are rare occasions where it's someone different. So again, review all the, the meeting details and the officer assignments. Uh, and once you're confident that all of that stuff is good to go, um, you go ahead and you assign it, you input your, uh, your membership ID or your, your membership number in that form. Go ahead and click submit. It'll let you know that the uh, officer that the officer election report uh, has been submitted, uh, and you can click done or click on back to OER landing page, whichever way you've got to go. Uh, but the done button will take you back out to the uh, to the to the uh, initial screen. So um, remember, when you um, when you uh, submit that report. Um, you won't be able to revise it again until we either approve it or reject it here at national headquarters. So once you submit that report, you won't be able to revise it until you get something back from us. And once you submit the current report, your previous officer election report from the previous year will then become viewable only. So you won't be able to revise that report either. So that's a it's an important distinction to make. So we want to make sure that um, that you've got all your ducks in a row before you click submit, for sure. You can also click save on that report without submitting it so that you can come back and make revisions if you realize, you know, midstream that there's an issue that you experienced. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we're uh, incredibly excited to announce is that um, very soon we're gonna be, I'm going to be releasing an uh, announcement that department administrators um, can be added to mydav.org so that they can then in turn help the adjutant, the commander um, with uh, these types of efforts. This is for department admins only. Folks at the chapter level will not have this capability. So there'll be detailed instructions on how to do that uh, in that memo that you'll see coming out very soon. Um, please look for that in your inboxes um, at the department level. But um, <clears throat> We're uh, super excited about that because we we certainly want our chapter folks, if they don't have the technology or the technological wherewithal, to be able to lean on our department staff um, for the inputting of officer election reports. So they should be able to, to go to the site, 
get the printable PDF, fill it out with their information, and then forward it over to the department uh, to then be entered. Um, if folks uh, have questions about that, again, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, as kind of an added bonus for tonight, I wanted to just make sure folks were aware of our new member recruitment resource. Um, so again, if you go to member resources on the main DAV.org page uh, and you scroll down to this second tile on the left, publicity, uh, you're going to see um, a whole list of different things uh, that are related to kind of publicity and outreach that we do. But you're looking for the recruitment resource here. Now, there's two different versions. There's a digital version and a print version. So if you're someone that's very comfortable with technology, um, you will see you see essentially the same thing between the digital and the printable. But the idea with the digital resource is to kind of give you a dynamic way to share information. So the first thing you're going to see is the elevator um, theme, the elevator speech here. So just a quick 30 second blurb that you can share um, as to why somebody should join DAV, right? And again, we're trying to arm you with the tools necessary to be successful recruiters. So the idea behind the digital version is you can save this to your home screen on your pad or your phone. Uh, you have all this information at your fingertips. So if somebody says, you know, hey, Doug, wh why does DAV have membership dues? So again, here's a, here's a blurb for that. But if you click on this hyperlink, to launch the DV membership dues video that we have on YouTube. Uh, once you're done answering that question, you can just back out of that, back to the uh, recruitment resource. And if somebody has another question, uh, you know, who's eligible for DV, you can click on the hyperlink in that blurb inside that paragraph, and it'll launch the value of DV membership video that talks about not only who's eligible, but also, um, but also what the advantages of being a DAV member are. So again, get comfortable with this resource. I really feel like it's dynamically changing how we're recruiting. The interim membership uh, committee did great work on this. We really appreciate all the time and effort that they put into this. Um, and I really hope that you take some time at your chapter meeting to share this with everybody uh, so that they can kind of poke around in these links and, and re review this stuff so they have it at their fingertips. Uh, pardon me, when they're out recruiting and talking to uh, uh, prospective members. So for those folks that aren't as technically uh, inclined, they can print off the PDF version. And on the back side, on both forms, this is what it looks like. But on the PDF version, you'll see this QR code. All of the videos and site links that are within the digital document, obviously because you can't click on a piece of paper, but somebody can take out their phone or their pad, turn on the camera, scan that QR code with their camera, and a link will present itself that they can click on, and it'll launch a link tree to all of the videos and, and uh, sites that are available in the document. So again, this is a great tool. I really encourage you to share this with your members at your next uh, chapter, department-level meetings. Uh, I think this is really going to help us uh, go a long way towards meeting our goal because. We're always looking to put additional arrows in your recruitment quivers. Uh, if you have questions about any of the stuff, again, don't hesitate to call uh, me or my team, and, and we'll take as much time as we need uh, with you on this. Um, so I, I know uh, we went through some things there quickly. Uh, again, I want to encourage everybody to uh, circle back to member resources, scroll down, uh, open up that um, that mydav.org user guide. We're uh, continuing to enhance that uh, with information about uh, off online officer election reports, uh, in addition to other stuff. And as new uh, capabilities and features um, roll out, we'll be sure to keep you abreast of all those uh, great changes. Uh, I hope you're looking forward to them. Uh, Elizabeth, that's all I had right now. I'll go ahead and take some questions. Great, thank you, Doug, for that. Um, as a reminder, you can submit questions in the Q&A box. You'll find that at the bottom of your screen. All right, so first question here, how do I find a member if I don't have the member number? So um, there was a capability in the old legacy system, and it is something we're looking to put uh, into DAV, uh, into mydav.org, um, where people can search by name the national roster 
Uh, right now, unfortunately, chapters and departments are limited to the reports that are available to them, and there isn't a search feature uh, per se that will just let you put in somebody's name and, and search our national roster. But we are that is, that is a hot topic. It's definitely on my radar, and we are look. That's one of the few capabilities that we had in the old system for department and chapter officers that we don't have in mydu.org. But it is definitely something that I'm trying to to uh, to reestablish within the new system. Uh, you know, it's still over the horizon, but it is definitely on my way. Okay. And, but when filling out election reports, you don't need the member ID number, correct? You can search. Yes, you can search by, by name. name. That is one of the greatest features of, um, of the new officer election report feature on mydev.org is the ability to search uh, by other criteria other than the membership number. I get it, you know, uh, 12, 13, 14, uh, uh, digit membership numbers. Uh, you end up fat fingering like I do on the keypad, whatever, and it becomes frustrating. That's why we wanted our chapter and department leaders to be able to search uh, by other criteria. Great. All right. Chapters do not have access to the member at large chapter of their state. How can this be fixed? Well, um, <clears throat> the department has access to that. So if there's something that you're looking for from the chapter at large, you would need to, to get that from the department. Um, if you are looking to do, um, say, you want to invite people that are in the at large chapter uh, to, you know, that are within your chapter's jurisdiction uh, to join your chapter, you can certainly reach out to us here at uh, uh, National Headquarters, and I'd, I'd love to develop a list uh, for you that way. Of course, uh, the more, um, the more, members are associated with active chapters, uh, the better the AV is for it. So I will definitely support that. Um, so of course you can reach out to um, to your departments for one-offs, but if you're looking for a list uh, for an effort like that, certainly give us a call or shoot me an email and we can get that for you. Great. How do you account for commander and adjutant's signature that was needed before? So that's a great question. Um, when you register for and are validated into mydev.org, um, again, that's roles based, and we're seeing that information that we get on the officer election report compared to the validated record in our system. Uh, so that becomes kind of a de facto um, digital signature. So when, again, if you're thinking about the officer report, um, the folks that are on the left side of the report and the officer authorized to receive mail are the folks that can complete and submit a new officer report. So typically there's holdover in one of those positions, at least the adjutant uh, for the chapter when new elections are held or your senior vice then moves up to, to commander. When that new, when that election occurs and the new officer report needs to be submitted, um, that one of those individuals that are still in the chapter can go ahead uh, on the new op report and submit it. Um, and what happens is the folks that are on the report get an email notification that the um, uh, that the report has been submitted, uh, that it's been approved or rejected. Uh, in addition to the folks at the chapter level that get uh, informed. A email is also sent to the officer authorized to receive mail at the department level uh, of the appropriate jurisdiction. So there's lots of transparency uh, that surrounds the process beyond um, uh, the initial validation into DEV into my DEV .org. Great, thank you. Is there an expected election date to be used by chapters? No, everybody, uh, I mean, most chapters have their uh, elections in the springtime. Uh, some have them earlier. Uh, some have them a little bit later. Typically, they've got to have them uh, in order to operate and be successful at the upcoming department convention. Uh, so there's a hard deadline there. But chapters typically uh, designate their own uh, election uh, month and year, or pardon me, their own election month. Uh, they just need to make sure that they're having their elections at the same time every year, uh, or as close uh, to it as they can. Obviously, there are things, life gets in the way sometimes. COVID is the prime example of that, where we didn't have chapter meetings for a bit, uh, and some of that stuff was delayed. Uh, and certainly, if, if you get outside the, 
the typical month when you are having an election, just reach out to us and and we can make adjustments. But uh, we just want to try to maintain consistency for the good of the order. But I'm not going to dictate uh, when chapters should have their elections outside of what I just discussed. Right. And you kind of just alluded to this, but why is it important to update and submit these officer election reports in a timely manner? Because we need to know, uh, you know, who's in charge, essentially, at the uh, at the local level, for sure. Departments need that information. Uh, so there's a couple of key things here. Uh, one, we need to know who are the folks that have authority uh, in their different jurisdictions. But also those folks are the ones that we're communicating with here from national headquarters. Um, I'll kind of give you just another little teaser here. We're currently revamping all of our um, all of our department and chapter websites, what we historically called our member portals. Uh, but you're going to have access to a no kidding website. So we'll be able to communicate through that as will the, the department headquarters. But we also send out uh, email communications. That's the primary way that we're communicating with chapters. So at the very least, every chapter uh, and department commander, adjutant, and officer authorized to receive mail, again, if it's a different person, are receiving these communications from us um, via a uh, uh, platform called Constant Contact. So you'll get those uh, notifications, the, the, the memo, the announcement about admins being added. All that stuff comes via that. Uh, there's a way to unsubscribe from that Constant Contact uh, platform. And sometimes people do it. I don't know if they do it erroneously. I know some people do it purposefully, but that's how we're sharing information from the top down with our chapter and department leaders. Um, so if you are someone who thinks maybe you mistakenly unsubscribe, you please give me a call or shoot me an email at dwells at dev.org so we can get that fixed. So if you're like, why isn't DEV talking to me anymore? That's probably why. Or check your junk and make sure our stuff didn't accidentally get sent to your junk and mark us as not spam. Um, you know, we have had some historical issues in the past where where uh, uh, internet service providers have mistaken us for spam and, and uh, uh, you know, constant contact is one of the things that helps us prevent that. Uh, it helps maintain our internet reputation and all that good stuff. So uh, please be sure if you're a chapter Commander, adjutant, or, or RM, uh, ensure you're getting these communications from us. Uh, if not, there's a problem, give us a call. Doug, what are some reasons that an officer election report would be rejected? Uh, so, you know, in the past, we would reject it for one of the reasons I talked about that's kind of excluded now, where somebody will put uh, an officer in that's not part of the chapter. They have to be part of the chapter. And again, at that point, we just need to effectuate a, uh, a transfer form. But, um, uh, you know, there could be a problem with uh, the report, uh, the data was submitted versus when, it, uh, or probably the date elections were held versus what we historically have of record. Uh, maybe, um, uh, you know, information on the uh, time and place has to be rejected for some reason. Uh, there could be a whole host of issues. That, that's a great example, though. Sometimes a chapter will move, not understanding there's kind of a process that they have to go through in order to ensure that they're not uh, infringing on another chapter's historical jurisdiction. So uh, the, the moves for chapters have to be approved before they're put on the officer report. So we've had many indications, uh, many times where people have submitted a, a change of address or meeting time and place, uh, and it wasn't approved. So we need to make sure that that you know the department's aware of that stuff, and that uh, nationals aware of that stuff to make sure that everything's kosher before we let that happen. So that that's one of the reasons that uh, any uh, or those are a couple of reasons that uh, an OER. Okay. Um, here's maybe a more specific example. We have one member who said one of our chapter's reports was rejected because we didn't have a first junior vice commander. I noticed that your example had a vacancy for that officer. Which yeah, is so, correct. That, again, so I that example was just showing you kind of as you fill it out, but that's a great point. That's what I referenced before. Some offices have to be filled in order for the officer election report to be uh, to be accepted. So the system won't even let you accept it if you don't have all of the officers uh, filled. 
Now, if you're finding, uh, you know, you're a chapter, you're trying to reinvigorate and uh, uh, you just, you've got the commander, the adjutant, the senior vice, the treasurer, you've got all these offices filled except the junior vice commander. Um, we can push exceptions through on our end. But again, what are the three most important things? Communication, 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 right? Reach out to us uh, and I'll discuss it with the inspector general. And, uh, it, it, you know, if the situation is appropriate, we can certainly make an exception, but that can only be done on our end. Uh, you know, for obviously for the good of the order, the system won't approve, uh, won't let you submit reports that are, um, that are uh, incomplete in that regard. But thank you. Um, another member asks, is there an assistant adjutant role available? I'm sorry, is there an assistant adjutant what available? Role available. No, but uh, again, that can be um, uh, that can be fixed with the department admin um, uh, capability. So you'll have the capability to designate up to two folks within the department as as admins. So, uh, and I'm assuming this question was was about a department level position. Uh, that's never going to be the case at the chapter level, uh, but uh, at the department, if you have another body, and especially if they're already a member, it's very easy to designate them uh, as a department admin. You'll, you'll receive specific instructions on how to do that. So the great thing about the department admin designation is that somebody doesn't have to be a member. We can create a constituency for them in our system and still get them uh, assigned as a department admin within the system. Doug, you may have answered this, but does um, or do OERs require both commander and adjutant signatures? Not anymore. Again, that's uh, we're, we're validating folks into the system. Uh, it can be anybody that's um, uh, on the previous report. Um, uh, again, on the left, if you think of the old uh, paper officer election report, everybody on the left side and the ORM. Um, if you experience an instance in which the entire chapter leadership is wiped out for some reason. Uh, that's why the departments can submit officer election reports on behalf of the chapter. So that chapter would uh, uh, just need to have their election, elect their new slate of officers and send it into the department. They'll validate that. They know the lay of the land uh, locally better than we do here at headquarters. And they'll input that uh, officer election report in on behalf of the chapter. All right, somebody asked the difference between DAV.org and MyDAV.org. Do you want to kind of recap MyDAV.org? Yeah, so DAV.org is just the, the website. If you haven't had a chance to go to DAV.org, our main uh, national website, please do so. Our communications team did an outstanding job of redesigning and refreshing that website. Everything is uh, very intuitive. Um, you know, we, we got rid of a lot of the clutter. Uh, but especially if you're a chapter or department member leader, uh, please go to member resources and click on member leader on that tile. All of the, the memos that we've sent out, there's presentations there that we've done at commanders and adjutants and our recent department admin training. Um, but especially those historical memos, uh, a question that I get a lot of time is, well, how do we invite members in virtually that are chapter meetings? There's the memo that offers that guidance is right there in the members leader section. Uh, there's also the quick links tile that folks can go to. Um, you know, that has all of the information you need. So your annual financial report kit, um, you know, when convention time rolls around, the delegate forms for the department and chapters will be there. Um, so just everything that you could, uh, you know, want to look at is really found in those two tiles when it comes to just the general operations of the departments and chapters. So, uh, you know, please take a take a look at that stuff. It's just great what our communications team uh, was able to do. So this very presentation will be housed at DAV.org on November resources, uh, as well as I think we're posting it on our on our DAV YouTube page. Uh, so DAV.org is the straight website. MyDAV.org uh, is the platform, uh, the public facing platform that we uh, and designated as our 
uh, platform of choice to replace the old legacy membership system. So bear in mind, um, while it's, it's membership heavy right now, uh, in addition to all the things that you can do, you know, as, as, a, as an individual member, paying off memberships, uh, you know, uh, looking to see how much you still owe, et cetera, et cetera, updating your personal information. Uh, if you get married, need to change your name, that's where you do it. Request a new membership card, complete a transfer request, all that stuff. It's very membership uh, bent right now, but there are going to be other uh, other uh, capabilities um, added to that down the road. I don't want to steal any thunder here, but uh, I know there's other other departments that are going to be adding some information uh, through my network. So it'll be your one stop shop for anything that you need in order to operate as a member, as a volunteer, as a member leader. Uh, that's the goal. That's the stretch goal. I have a couple more questions here. Again, if you want to submit a question, just do so in the Q&A box that you'll find at the bottom of your screen. All right, let's see. Is mydav.org mobile friendly? Absolutely. Uh, so not only is mydav.org mobile friendly, but dav.org, the website, is mobile friendly. So everything we do uh, is mobile friendly. All of the all of the platforms we're using um, when you go to, if you go to DAV.org on your phone, it's going to present differently to you than it does on a computer. It's it's uh, optimized for mobile devices when you're accessing it that way. Um, so MyDAV.org is the same thing. If, if you like to, to sit in the man cave uh, in your recliner and, and conduct business on a Sunday and catch up on your emails and prepare for your next chapter meeting and all that stuff on your pad while you're watching the football game, I love that. Uh, MyDAV.org is... Uh, very mobile friendly and you can absolutely do all that stuff. You know, some of the, one of the things we're working on right now uh, to add to mydev.org is the ability to do annual financial reports uh, electronically. So uh, we want to optimize that and be able to auto-populate fields and uh, allow you just to, to, to take pictures of your receipts and uh, other items necessary for a successful AFR. Uh, and just do all that from the comfort of, of uh, your mobile device uh, or your computer or whatever you prefer. So there's other capabilities coming. Great, Doug. Is there anything else, any final thoughts you'd like to add? No, again, I just appreciate uh, everybody uh, coming out, uh, you know, for the presentation. Um, we'll uh, be sure to post uh, uh, this presentation as well. So if you want to uh, shared at a local meeting, you certainly can, but, uh, you know, I encourage you to uh, shoot the link to this presentation to folks uh, that maybe weren't able to, to participate tonight. Um, but again, if you have any questions, concerns, not just about mydev.org or um, the OER process or anything else that you see uh, within the scope of, of DEV here at headquarters, remember, we embrace the wrong, no wrong door approach here in membership. Uh, if it's not in our wheelhouse and we don't have the expertise to properly answer your question, we are going to get you to the right folks that can. And Doug, we just got one more question in here. Are sure. there any plans to give department junior vice commanders visibility of their chapter's reports, such as membership roles? So the junior vice commander for, for the department can be designated on that. I know we don't have, uh, you know, Second junior vice. I, not all chapter or pardon me, not all departments are created equal in that regard, um, or have a need for additional officers like that. But um, it, it, we do have the capability, as needed, to add uh, additional spaces for officers. And again, we're going to be continually revising this. Uh, uh, but that's something I'll make a note of um, as we move forward with uh, additional changes. Great. Well, thank you for another wonderful presentation, Doug, and a big thanks to everyone who tuned in. Your interest to commitment and commitment to veterans help amplify DAV's resounding voice on behalf of our nation's disabled veterans and their families. As a reminder, before we go, you can find a recording of this and past webinars under member resources on DAV.org and on our YouTube page. If you have any follow-up questions, you can reach Doug via email at dwells at DAV.org. Again, that's dwells at dav.org. Thank you all again and enjoy the rest of your day.